So what you're going to see is you're going to see the Vancouver Canucks in the playoffs this year just maintaining. So you get pressure, move the puck. And here, the puck is going backwards. It's going back right to the player who had it, who I guess is a defenseman. And all they're doing is maintaining possession of the puck in order to gain it. Let's watch that again. So again, here's the pressure. This player is getting pressure, but he already has skated. He was skating away from the pressure, but the pressure overtook him. But he already knew where the player, this player is now supporting this player. Getting open, getting in a passing lane so that they can get the puck. So, sorry about the, uh, so now this player gets the puck. What's going to happen? He's skating away from pressure. The, pr the same pressure attacks him. And this is often the case in hockey that the puck goes right back to the player who just originally passed it because the pass relieved that pressure from this four checker and now they're, they're open. So now they, they bring the puck back and it goes right back. And this is it. You know, this is the patience. This is playing keep away. All those two players are doing is playing keep away from that player. That's all they're doing. Now he's going to pressure back again. Now we got more support. That created more support because either it's a line change or players were able to get back and support that puck carrier some more. So same player. Again, keep away. Get the puck to space. Start moving. Now, it's very important. Here's the puck carrier, but look at all the support. All in one area. That's what hockey is, but you'll see if a coach or teams are playing a positional game, you'll see the winger has to be here. The defenseman has to be here. The center has to be here. The other wing is there. All these parts are interchanging constantly. And that's why players need to learn a non-positional game, but, but rather a conditional game. So look at, and there it is, a nice drop pass. Because they wanted this gentleman to take the puck. And the other team's going for a line change. But the whole time, head up, he's skating. This time they're going on to the attack. But the head is up looking to see where the pressure is coming from and mostly seeing where the support is. So what is this player going to do next? And then finally, they gain the zone. But that's the idea. So now, getting into defense when we don't have the puck. On my teams, I always stress defense first because defense is getting the puck back and it creates the offense because if you play good defense, then you'll get the puck and you'll be on offense and not many teams get scored on when they have the puck. So obviously defense is when we don't have the puck, but the same concepts have to occur. That there are no positions. Now we have five defensemen. Everybody is a defenseman. Again, there is form, there is structure, but not necessarily positions. Because when we get into that, it really takes away from the player's creativity and things are going to change. Players are going to fall down. Other players are going to have to cover for other players in their areas on the ice. So, again, they have to be interchangeable. But the main thing in defense is once we get into our own zone is that everybody is protecting this house. And you'll see that if you watch the NHL. You'll see the defense. Everybody's collapsing there. Especially female hockey, you see that kind of thing. But the same thing, the D1, the D2, 3, 4, 5, it, it is, again, D1 is close to the puck, D2 is the next close to the puck, and so on and so on. So it doesn't matter what position they are, everybody's defenseman, and it has more to do with the condition of who is closest to the puck. So in the defensive zone, the defensive structure is this. Now people, again, I, I think we're going to go over this a little bit later, but what a lot of coaches make the mistake of, and some organizations, is they believe that this is a system. And you, you don't need a system when, you, when players understand hockey and condition. You don't need a power play 
when players understand how to get open. You don't need a breakout, again, if players understand how to get open on the ice and support the puck carrier. That is all that is. It is not a system. It's simply the way that hockey is played. So if you want to get the puck back, if the puck is in the corner, then we have D1 is closest. D2 is backing that player up. Because what, what you should do is try to create two-on-ones everywhere. If you have two players and they have one, the chances of your team winning the puck are far greater. So this player is making sure that if this player gets beaten, that they have another line of defense there. And then there's another line of defense at the goal. And then the player that's covering the point, they even come down into the low slot. And at Penn State University, where I used to coach, we would call this strength in the shaft. That how a player on the offense is going to go through four defensemen in, and then to our goaltender, well, good luck. If this is done correctly, that's going to be very difficult to beat. And you see a lot of NHL teams do it. You'll even see other NHL teams be even more aggressive, which they call a swarm, where this player won't even back up. They'll just go. And then this player will come in, and these players will come even deeper. Because the concept is, where are the openings? Here and here. Well, if the puck is passed to a player behind the net, then this player can go, and then they can do a shift, but everybody can stay right in here defending. The obvious other open ice is open ice way over here. That's going to be difficult to get the puck to. So the open ice is, are going to be these areas where goals simply aren't scored. And that's what you're doing. You're clogging the middle of the ice and then eventually trying to get that puck back. But that is defensive zone coverage with everybody playing defense. Everybody's got to come back and help out. So our duties and responsibilities when we don't have the puck, when we're on defense, is number one, the obvious thing is prevent the other team from scoring. And then it's also to regain possession of the puck so we're on offense. They say the best defense is a good offense. Well, that's true. If you can keep the puck the entire game, you're likely not to put the puck in your own net. So prevent the other team from scoring and regain possession of the puck. And how do we do that? Number one, when we showed that picture of, of uh, the Hurricanes and the Panthers, two players were battling for the puck, and it was a loose puck. Who had the puck? We didn't know. So on those situations, the players want to stay on the defensive side of the puck. Because if you lose the puck and it goes away from your net, that's fine. You have opportunity to get it. What you don't want is to be caught behind the play and give them an odd man rush. So whenever in doubt, you want to be on the defensive side of the punt, that's on the side our net is on. And then you want to control the high ground. This is the high ground between the area between the face-off dots. We have to cover that. All right. You don't want to get beaten outside the dots. What this concept is called is containment. If the players are out here, that's fine. Don't let them in the high ground. If they're out here, they're not going to score many goals against us. And they're almost, almost harmless. So control the high ground, keep them outside, contain the opponent. Back check the middle. We remember we, the house, you draw a house here, that's where you back check. Players, if they get beaten, if they lose a battle, and they don't know where to go, you go to the middle and then figure it out. And then pressure the puck. Normally, one player. This is where we get the younger players, the mites, the squirts, the peewees. They're the ones that don't necessarily recognize that one of their players is already going to pressure the puck directly. Going to try to take it or contain from the, from the puck carrier on the other team. The others should deny support. What's that? Take away their, their passing options. Take away the opponent's teams that are supporting. So one player pressure, the others take away the people that that player can pass to. And if you do that, now you've got a puck carrier under pressure. They've got to get their head down. They've got to keep the puck. And if they have nowhere to pass to, 
or that's when they make bad passes and they'll pass it right to us, or they'll lose the puck because they, they are lost in thought and, or they don't have the skill to deal with it. Again, the duties, all the players, all five of our players that aren't goalies are playing defense because either they're pressuring the puck carrier or they're denying support, covering somebody else. But what, what young players get into is you'll see three players go to the puck. Well, then one little pass, even just to dump off the boards, beats three players, odd man rush. That's how you get scored on. 